It takes a lot to get a character from level 80 to 90, like almost as much as it takes to get them from level 1 to level 80. And with resources being as limited as they are, it is really important to know who really benefits from being level 90 so you don't waste your hard-earned Mora and experience books. Hey everyone, Shark here, and this video is going to be a guide on who to get to level 90 first to maximize your damage. The first thing to know is that it's almost always worth it to get a character you like or one that you use a lot to level 80 ascended. This means you complete their final ascension and unlock the ability to get them to level 90, but instead you just keep them at level 80 so you can save millions of Mora and hundreds of experience books by keeping them at level 80 instead of going all the way to 90. So with the understanding that it is worth it to ascend most characters to level 80 plus and keep them there, who should you focus on actually getting all the way to level 90? The best characters in the game to get to level 90 are the ones that consistently trigger transformative reactions. Those reactions are Swirl, Bloom, Burgeon, Hyperbloom, Superconduct, Electrocharge, Overload, and so forth. I did a whole video on all of the elemental reactions and what they do, so I'm not going to cover that here, but just know that if your character wants a lot of elemental mastery, like Kazua or Hyperbloom Kuki, they also want to be level 90. The reason you want to get these characters to level 90 first is because transformative reactions really only depend on two things for damage. Number one, the amount of elemental mastery a character has, and number two, that character's level. There are a lot of other things that go into this, but really those two are the most important, especially because transformative reactions have a special level multiplier, unlike most other reactions. And without going into a big math lesson on how this works, we can take a look at this graph and see the difference in reaction damage between a level 80 character and a level 90 character is about 30%. For reference, that type of damage increase can be similar to going from a 4-star free-to-play weapon to a 5-star signature weapon, but this type of damage increase will not cost you any primo gems, just some experience books and mora to level up a character. So let me give you a concrete example of why this is worth it. Say we have a Kazua and a Hyperbloom Kuki Shinobu, both are level 80 and both have 750 elemental mastery. At level 80, this Kazuwa's Swirls will deal 3,121 damage, and this Kuki's Hyperblooms will deal 15,603 damage. But if we increase their levels to 90, suddenly Kazuwa's Swirls are dealing 4,191 damage each, and Kuki's Hyperblooms are dealing 20,953 damage each. That is a massive damage increase, and keep in mind these examples do not look at weapons, talent levels, artifacts, enemy resistances, defense shred, elemental resistance shred, or anything like that. This is just the raw increase from leveling a character from 80 to 90. And once again, not every character gets this insane damage bonus increase. It's only for those characters who specialize in transformative reactions. I'll list some of those characters and the transformative reactions they specialize in on screen for you now. This is by no means an exhaustive list, and there are a lot of characters who you can build specifically for transformative reactions. So if you want to experiment with different builds, like an Elemental Mastery Burge and Dea, you should absolutely follow your shark heart and do so. Though I will recommend that you try a transformative reaction build that focuses on Swirl, Bloom, Burgeon, or Hyperbloom. This is because the Viridescent Venerer and Flower of Paradise Lost artifact sets increase the damage of those reactions respectively, and they can really make those big reaction numbers even bigger. The next characters you should get to level 90 are those that specialize in causing spread or aggravate reactions. These are additive reactions that also have a bonus multiplier based on your character's level. And while the spread and aggravate reaction damage you gain from leveling up characters will not be nearly as much compared to transformative reactions, it can be around a 15% overall damage increase. So if you play Sino, Alhatham, Tanari, or another damage dealer that focuses on spread and aggravate reactions, it can be worth it to get them to level 90 as well. Third in priority for characters you should get to level 90 are characters that scale off stats other than attack. These would be characters like Noel, Albedo, and Arataki Ito, whose damage is amplified by their defense, or Nuvelit or Yulan, whose damage is based off their max HP. 
These characters do not have some special level multiplier like we talked about with the previous reactions, but they do gain a lot more stats when they go from level 80 to level 90. And unlike typical damage dealers who only scale off attack, these types of characters can use the other stats they gain to actually convert into damage. For example, Noelle only gains about 20 base attack and 90 defense when she goes from level 80 to 90, but she can use both stats to increase her damage. Whereas an attack-based character like Shangling only gains 25 base attack when going from level 80 to 90. And even though Shangling can do way more damage than Noelle, getting Shangling to level 90 will not increase her damage in the same way that getting Noelle to level 90 will. This is also why if you complete a character's final ascension and they're an attack-based character, oftentimes you can just leave them at level 80 out of 90 and that's completely fine. Taking your typical attack scaling characters from level 80 to level 90 will not usually be that much of a damage increase, which is why these characters are often the last priority for getting to level 90. They'll gain maybe 20 to 30 base attack, and if you're really low on resources, that's just not worth it. Especially when it costs about the same amount of Mora and experience books to take a character from level 1 to level 80 as it does to get them from level 80 to level 90. Now there is a bit of a caveat with this. If you play a hyper carry character like Zhao or Wander, it can be worth it to get them to level 90 because they are literally doing all the damage on your team. For example, if you're using a Wanderer team with Wanderer, Bennett, Farazan, and Zhongli, then you want to squeeze out as much damage as possible with Wanderer because no one else on that team is going to be doing any damage. In situations where your entire team exists to make one character shine, you may want to get that character to level 90. I've got one final tip for you, and I know it will help a lot of people, especially if you're like, okay, I've got several of characters you mentioned, and I know I should level the characters that trigger transformative reactions, but who do I level first among them? I have Kazuo, Kuki, Yao Yao, I don't know who to take to level 90 first. If that's you and you can't decide, then what you should do is level the character that will fit in most of your teams first. This will usually be a character like Kazuo, Sucrose, or Venti because they fit really well with Pyro, Hydro, Electro, and Cryo characters, so they have a lot of versatility. Secondly, you should look for characters that may get more than one benefit from leveling up to 90. Let's say you wanted to build an Elemental Mastery Raiden Shogun for a Hyper Bloom team and an Elemental Mastery Yao Yao for a Nilu Bloom team. While both options are really strong, if your Yao Yao was built with enough Elemental Mastery to make Nilu's Blooms hit really hard, she would be a better choice to level up to 90 first. This is because increasing Yao Yao's level not only increases the damage she would do in Bloom teams, but her heals also scale off of her max HP, so you get better damage and better healing. And because the Bloom reaction not only damages enemies, but it also damages you, you'll definitely want to make sure you have a nice strong healer on that team. If you were to level up your Elemental Mastery right into level 90, the Hyper Blooms would certainly be doing a lot more damage, but the extra stats she gets from level 90 would not be double dipping somewhere else, like for healing or anything like that. So in choosing who to level up to 90 first, choose a character that uses a lot of Elemental Mastery and triggers transformative reactions like Swirl, Hyper Bloom, or Burgeon. Then level characters that focus on the Spread or Aggravate reactions, after that, level up characters whose damage scales off stats other than attack. And finally, attack scaling characters should be your last priority when choosing who to level up to 90. And of course, be mindful of characters that you want to use a lot and teams that you want to play. Don't level up Noelle if you never plan to use her. And if you have a hyper carry on-field DPS that you really like playing, you can of course get them to level 90 first as well. I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions about which characters you should level first, you can always come by and catch me on stream and ask me there. I stream daily on Twitch, and you're always welcome to come by, ask any questions, and just hang out. Have a wonderful day everyone, stage awesome, don't forget to like the video, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.